Hello guys, welcome to The Train Parrot. On Thursday, we have a rejection of 59.6 and that pushes us down all the way to 56.8. We seem to be holding the four hour structure intact, meaning that we still have in that time frame higher highs and higher lows. On one hand, this is good news because that means that we haven't sold as strongly as we did on the 1st of July when we confronted the resistance. At that point, we lost 10K almost non-stop until we reach 53.5. This is showing some signs of resilience in the price, but since we are on a weekend, the last thing that we want is that Bitcoin starts recovering 60K or going anywhere to the highs. I wanna go into why is that? Why could that be dangerous for Bitcoin? Guys, if this is the type of content that you like to watch, make sure that you're subscribed to the channel, hit that notification bell so you get notified every time I put out one of these videos. And if you feel like supporting the channel, watch the video until the very end and do not go anywhere without leaving a comment down below that is really helping the channel to continue growing. So let's get straight into the content. We can see here the four hour descending broadening wedge. We can also see the CPR monthly, the levels for July. As I was saying, it's a great thing that we got a rejection at this level of resistance, but instead of selling in this way, or also here when we went straight again, another 10K, in this occasion, instead of doing to the 48K, to the 50Ks where I have my buying orders, we are kind of holding there above the CPR monthly support. And this means that the bulls are fighting hard to get above this resistance. And the thing is, we might be able to break out outside this pattern with a target of the top of the falling wedge, which is around 72K. And that is quite the recipe to get a new old time high. But don't go too fast because this is on a weekend and things that occur on a weekend tend to get reverted. The strategy using CME gaps on weekends and even during working days has had over a 90% of win rate. This strategy is very simple and it consists in looking at the closing price when CME goes off. And for this weekend, on Friday at midnight, it closed at 57.8. Just like the past weekend, we went high and we dropped right where we came from. So the least thing that we want to do right now is to go too high and then to go to the same price or even to break lower and start building a bearish structure and then to target those 48Ks. Personally, what I prefer is to have a weekend shakeout going to the lows, potentially to have good news, some sort of recovery on the NASDAQ and the top stocks driving this higher to close the gap, but in the opposite direction. So for example, we can go slightly below the CPR level at 56.8 during the weekend, even take the liquidity that is probably sitting here thanks to all the stop losses that were placed when this bounced up, that will be great. In regards to the RSI, after the breakout, we came for a retest and now we are printing a lower high. So on the four hour, this is telling us that potentially that is what we are going to see during the weekend. Hopefully I'm right and we start seeing something like this to shake the lungs during the weekend. That is, in my opinion, a more positive move to secure some upside during next week. Now, looking at the daily, you can see that after these two attempts, Bitcoin has had a full day that it didn't even try to go again for the resistance at 60K, built by this trend line that we formed since October. So this is weakness, but on the other hand, I have to also give merit to the price that this level here should be our resistance. But instead of that, you can see that slowly the price has been creeping up above this level to turn it now into support. So this is mildly positive, bullish, and it might give us another attempt to the 60s over the weekend. But as I explained, that is 3K at the closing price of the CME, and it's got a high likelihood of getting reverted if it played out during the weekend. On the daily, we are pointing two days to the upside, which is quite bullish and is the recipe to get to the 51 RSI on the daily and potentially to get that breakout. Remember that 51 on the RSI right now corresponds with 60.7. So this will be really annoying if the price managed to conquer 
this trend line and for potentially just Sunday, it's above 60, just to see how another humiliation from this resistance and then come back to 31. At the moment, 31 on the RSI is pointing to a price of almost 54K. So that might mean that you can get to almost 61, but that could be a rejection because that is resistance. So potentially that can drive us all the way back to 54. If we hold that, we're going to have a strong case that the bears haven't been able to break below 54. And all the people that me that we are fishing around these levels of 51, maybe we don't get those lower prices to celebrate at the end of the summer. Nasdaq last week printed a very, very ugly red candle in here. It's an engulfing candle that is engulfing almost four days of profits. It is a lower low, so it's a bearish divergence. It's with lost of momentum because we broke below the trend line. Unfortunately, it's not a lower low yet to fully, fully have the three checkboxes to say that this is coming down. It's difficult to tell if we're going to get a similar outcome to what we had around the 20th of June, where we saw another leg up, or if this is the top. I'm not trying to forecast the top. Sometimes accidentally I forecast the top just because I'm very consistent in confirming one by one all the checkboxes. Hit the like if you appreciate this sort of rigorous approach. The S&P close below support. It seems that on Friday it tried to regain that level of support. It's starting to behave a little bit sneaky at this area and I wouldn't be surprised after this sort of candle here similar to the closing candle of Nasdaq, that we could see some sideways or slightly bearishness during the next week. It's clear that the top stocks were responsible for this move. You can see Tesla retraced from 271 at some point to 234. That's a big move. Amazon has lost support as well on the RSI here. Nvidia lost momentum quite a while ago, more than 23 days ago. And Apple doesn't seem as destroyed as the other counterparts because it's still above support, but Apple has just printed a hive signal. Bear to mention that the previous one didn't even get respected. It only got half of the profits that it was promising. Google also has a hive on the daily and it has lost momentum a tiny bit, at least. I see people divided on crypto Twitter. Many people think that the stock market and the indexes are going to push down crypto. I think if the correction is massive in the traditional markets, of course, the crypto market is going to follow with that. Even though we've been already going down, we will go even lower if we saw a massive correction. We are talking about a correction over 10% on the Nasdaq, if that happened. But if the stock market and the big tech stocks start going sideways, I will forecast that maybe crypto is going to start catching up the old coins as well with all the gains that we have seen on the stock market. They need to couple again, most of the time mimic each other. So it's a rarity to see only crypto going lower. There's all the selling going on, but that needs to stop at some point and it needs to catch up. So crossing fingers for the traditional markets to just go sideways, to allow some of that cash flow, some people taking profits on those assets and moving them into crypto just because they are going to perceive crypto is on sale and they might take some of those profits and move them into crypto. Although we still cannot claim that we have recovered above the 200 moving average like we can see here after those two attempts as well. I got very good news because the MACD daily is today on the process of completing a bullish cross, which is really great. The last time we had one around here and we went to 72. Notice that is below the zero line, so that is great as well. We got one here in January and we made a move from 41 to 73.5. If we saw a rejection, this is going to turn into a fake out, but so far the MACD in my eyes is looking pretty bullish. Miners still don't complete the capitulation and every time I see this, it gives me the impression that it's getting further away from giving us that bull cross. By tomorrow, we are going to be able to see if we can confirm the bullish cross on the stochastic RSI weekly time frame, which will be phenomenal because throughout the full bull market, we haven't had a single fake out because even though if I call this a fake out because it only gave a 7% profit 
to the upside, whereas all of the previous signals gave over 30, 40, and even 80% profits after we had the bullish cross. The RSI is still in a lost momentum territory on the weekly, is pushing up towards the 50. My line in the sand for RSI is around 40, so hopefully we don't get to touch those levels, even though the head and shoulders target is pointing to 36, which is way beyond, but it still hasn't played out. We have had quite a few days in extreme fear territory. I've been talking throughout this period of how weird this bull market was that we never go into even fear. In September, we were at 40 week. This is a full year and this is the first time we are in extreme fear. Most of the cycles of Bitcoin, we spend a lot of time flicking between extreme fear to extreme greed. That is normal. You can see all these jumps in 2019 from 12 to 87 and in 2021 the same. We were at 15 and then we make it all the way back to the 80s. Whereas this market after the FTX collapse, during this recovery, we were at the 30s and that was it. No more fear. And that, in my opinion, wasn't really healthy. So now we are kind of paying our debt in that regards. There's something new about this market that I'm noticing as well. And it's not just the ETFs and all the spot and institutional investment, neither the fact that there is no retail. The investors that I'm seeing during this cycle, they seem to be more knowledgeable, more mature. With these moments of, of path coming from Germany, empty Gox, there are some numbers that I'm seeing in on-chain data from different analysts as well, commenting on this, that even though we are seeing all this fear, not many people are realizing their losses. And this is something new for Bitcoin, because typically in 2017 and in 2021, in those cycles, whenever there was extreme fear, the realization of losses was massive. It seems that people are getting more educated on Bitcoin and they are getting stronger hands. It could be that, I want to believe that, but it could be also a secondary effect of this market not having much retail. We were almost at all-time highs and eventually the interest on Bitcoin was at a very low, meaning that the retails was nowhere around when we were hitting all-time highs. That was really rare to me. I still remember when we were doing all-time highs and going beyond 20K and those prices in 2020 and 2021, the whole world was paying attention to those events. We were almost jumping and dancing every day. It was crazy. And not just me, but everyone around crypto. I know there was COVID. Everybody was at home, not having anything to do apart from spending all the money that was being printed and watching YouTube, which was the perfect storm to get all retail buying crypto. But these days, it seems like it's the opposite. No one has money. No one has time. Everybody's busy working, trying to pay the rent. And only the mature experts are trading Bitcoin and they are not willing to sell. Is that something bad? Maybe not. M maybe that explains why these drawdowns that we are seeing on these months are way less to what we used to see in the previous markets. Guys, I got a bunch of videos coming out this weekend how to use trading different to understand where are the levels of liquidations. For example, here at 58.5, we have a level of liquidation that you can see that is currently attracting the price towards it. It's going to be less than a 10 minute tutorial. I encourage to go watch it once it goes live. I'm also going to show this trading bot on Gainium that is giving 0.58 per day with a very small drawdown. You can see the stats here is just magnificent. And I'm going to give a link so you can copy it and trade it with your own coins, slightly tweak it. I'll give you some hints on how to improve it. And there will be an exclusive discount of 36% that you can grab from that video that is going to come out during this weekend. Guys, have a look at the description. I have a link to the exchange Bybit. That's my referral link that is offering up to 30,000 in rewards. But not just that, you can also connect your Bybit account to my Discord server and claim 70% discount on any of the trading parrot memberships. You can get access to 
over a hundred custom indicators that I have created in the past four years in PineScript for TradingView. Those are going to help you not just navigate the market, but also automate your strategies, do backtesting, use signals, start and stop your bots, and access also pro tools for trading bots like Per Selection Bot Assistant. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.